If you are buying a laptop for college, pause. Specs alone won't save you. And no, the most hyped laptops might be the worst choice for your course. So in this video, I'll break down what to avoid and what to look for and why one size fits all advice is a trap. So if you are about to buy a new laptop, it's worth slowing down for a bit and ask yourself these three simple but important questions. First, what will I actually use this laptop for? Is it just for note taking, web browsing and watching lectures? Or you will be working on code, building projects, maybe exploring machine learning, editing videos or even trying out 3D tools like the Blender. Because those workloads demands more from a laptop. And if that's the direction you are headed, an entry level machine might not keep up for long. Second, do I value portability more or the raw performance? If you are carrying your laptop to classes every day, something lightweight will feel more practical. On the other hand, if most of your work happens in your hostel room or at desk, a more powerful machine, even if it's heavier, could make a noticeable difference in speed and stability. Third, what's my realistic budget? This is less about what's ideal and more about being honest with your current range. If you are around 35 to 45,000, you will find laptops that are great for basic use, web development, documents, maybe light coding. Going beyond 55,000 to 75,000 gives you more flexibility, enough for smooth coding, development tools and even light machine learning. Once you cross the 80,000 budget, you start getting the power needed for heavier tasks like AI workloads, Blender or serious video editing or even the engineering softwares like the CAD. These three questions are a helpful starting point. They save not just the kind of the processor or RAM you will need, but even things like the battery life, thermals and the keyboard comfort. Skipping this step often leads to choices based on what's popular, not what fits your actual need. There is also something important that doesn't always get talked about. Two laptops with the same processor and graphic card can perform very differently. That's because specs only tell a part of the story. What really makes the difference is how the laptop is designed to use those specs. Through things like thermal management, power limits, SSD speeds, RAM configuration and even BIOS level tuning. These things don't show up in the product listing. You only notice them later. When one laptop stays cool and responsive and the other starts showing signs of a strain during everyday tasks. Let's talk about the college laptops for a moment. You don't need a one lakh machine to get through your coursework. But at the same time, some of the more budget friendly options might not hold up as well as, as you had hoped. Take something like your first Python project for example. On paper, it's simple. But if the laptop isn't built for even basic deployment work, things can get frustrating pretty fast with slow performance, frequent freezing or apps just crashing out of nowhere. Here are a few things worth keeping in mind. Mistake number one, choosing a MacBook just because it looks premium. MacBooks are beautifully built and their battery life is excellent, but they are not always the right tool for every job. For a creative field like video editing or design, they sign, but if you are into coding, data science or AI related workloads that requires the GPU, you might find that Mac OS comes with certain limitations. Some tools aren't fully compatible, other needs extra configuration. So unless Mac OS is required for your work or you are comfortable troubleshooting around it, Windows or Linux often offer more flexibility and tool support. Mistake number two, choosing an i3 or Ryzen 3 just to save money. Budget choices make sense as a student, but entry-level processor like the Intel i3 or the Ryzen 3 can feel limiting pretty quickly. You might not notice it while browsing or writing notes, but once you start running Python scripts, compiling code or using multiple apps, the system can start to lag. Mistake number three, overlooking thermals and fan noise. Thin and light laptops are great for portability, but in many cases, they struggle with heat. When airflow is restricted, the laptop heats up quickly and the fan kicks in loudly to try and cool it down. This mostly happens in thin and light laptops that comes with these so-called dedicated graphic cards. That heat doesn't just make the laptop noisy. It can also cause performance to drop under load, especially during long zoom calls, coding sessions or video renders. Mistake number four, assuming GPUs are only for gaming. This one is pretty common. If you're working on machine learning, 3D modeling, Blender or CAD or even small AI experiments, a dedicated GPU can make a notice difference. Task that often takes hours on integrated graphic card can be completed much faster with even a basic RTX 3050 or 2050. So while you don't need a top tier GPU, having a dedicated graphic card can open up new possibilities, not just for gaming but for actual productivity. These aren't just tech specs, they are a kind of choices that affects your daily experience. And once the semester starts, switching laptop isn't always easy. So let's look at what kind of setup might work best depending on your needs. For everyday student use, if your workload includes browsing documents, watching lectures and maybe a bit of light coding, you don't need anything too fancy. Something like the Ryzen 3 7320U 
or Intel i3 13th generation U series with 8GB of RAM and a 512GB SSD can keep things smooth, but it helps to prioritize a comfortable display, solid battery life, and a good keyboard. For computer science students, coders, and developers, once you are using IDs regularly, working on full projects, and switching between tools, performance can become noticeable. Look for at least a Ryzen 5 7000 series, Intel i5 12th generation, or Apple M2, and ideally 16GB of RAM. Even if you don't go for a GPU, a well-cooled, well-optimized system will let you code compile more comfortably for AI, machine learning, data science, Blender or CAD work. In these workloads, a GPU isn't just nice to have, it's genuinely useful. Even an RTX 2050 can speed training times or rendering by several times. Pair that with a strong mid-range CPU something like the Ryzen 5 7235H or the Intel i5 12450H and you will have a solid foundation for heavier work. If you want fewer compromises and more headroom, an RTX 3050 with 6GB VRAM can handle most tasks, from building models to editing videos without slowing you down. Now the real question, when's the exact moment a MacBook actually makes sense for you? If you are a student who's always moving between classes, libraries and coffee shops, and you want something light, silent and with battery life that can last all day, the MacBook Air M2 or M3 is a great choice. And if you are budget, you can also go with the M4. For iOS and macOS development, it's not even a question. You need a Mac, Xcode, IO simulators and publishing app to app store all run seamless here. If you are into AI, machine learning or 3D rendering, a MacBook can run those workloads, but not as fast as a Windows laptop with dedicated NVIDIA GPU. In those cases, you will get more raw performance for the same money with Windows. For most students though, if you value reliability, premium build quality and a laptop just work every time you open it, a MacBook can make your day-to-day -day work much smoother. Skip the expensive storage, get the base variant with 16GB of RAM and 256GB of SSD and pair it with an external SSD or cloud storage. This way, you will get it much cheaper and you will also get higher storage. Balancing performance versus portability. Powerful laptops with GPU gives you speed and flexibility, but they tend to be heavier and their battery life often takes a hit. Slim portable ones are great for carrying around, but they might throttle performance under load or struggle with the heavy task. So there's no perfect answer. It really depends on what your day looks like. If you are constantly on the move, attending back-to-back -back classes or working from cafes, a lighter laptop with efficient internals might make more sense. But if you do a lot of work in one place, coding, editing or running models, then a more powerful system with a graphic card could give you a better experience, even if it's not a truly a travel friendly. Alright, now you are way ahead of most of these students. You know what to avoid, you know what you actually need, and more importantly, you are not just buying what's trending. Whether it's data science, computer science, AI, or even Blender, I've covered all of them in the pinned playlist down below. And if you are planning to buy from the Amazon, then don't forget to check out the best buying links down below in the description box. Those are affiliate links, but they won't cost you anything extra. They will only help me support the channel so I can keep making these videos for you. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, stay awesome and I will see you in the next one.